around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, the story of a man who moved with it, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. Well, what'll it be, stranger? Nothing. What? I don't drink. Is that what you come in here for, to tell me you don't drink? I didn't come in here to tell you nothing, Barkey. You won't be the first stranger in Dodge. I've had to straighten out. Which Mr. one of these men is the marshal? The marshal? The marshal. I was told I'd find him here. He's here. He's sitting right behind you, so don't start nothing. Oh. Is that him sitting right there? That's him. Well. Marshal Dillon. Yeah. I want to talk to you, Marshal. I'll go ahead. Do you mind if I sit down? No. Huh. Now, my name is Ben Corder, Marshal. Ben Corder. This is my first time in Dodge. I know. And I want to be friends, Marshal. Uh, why not? <laughs> now, I figure we can do each other a lot of good. A lot of good. Oh? Is that so? That sure is. That's why I came to talk to you. See, uh, whenever I come to a new town, I always get to know the man that's running the place. That way I figure there won't be no misunderstandings later on. Misunderstanding about what? Well, I'm a gambler, Marshal. A Dodge is an open town, Mr. Corder. Oh, sure. You see, I make money gambling. Sometimes a lot of money. Now, you must be pretty lucky. Ah? Uh, <laughs> I'm lucky, all right. But now, you know how sometimes a player will go broke and start a fuss over it, maybe even run to the law about it? Yeah. Yeah, I know. And when he does, he's usually been cheated. Oh, some losers always got to complain about something. Is that what you came to tell me, Mr. Corder? Oh, Marshal, you know what I'm talking about. Now, you take care of the troublemakers, and I'll take care of you. Say, a quarter of the profits, eh? Let me explain something to you, Mr. Corder. If a man loses his money gambling, I figure that's his lookout. But I still don't allow any crooked games in Dodge, because sooner or later they lead to killing so you run your game straight, or out you go. That's not friendly, Mark. Now, you've made one mistake, Mr. Corder, trying to bribe me. You make another and you're through here. For good. Oh, you're one of the hard-nosed lawmen, eh? You'll find out soon enough, mister. Well, I... Now, I've got an idea that I can persuade you yet, Marshal. place called Deming? Deming? Oh, that's in New Mexico. Well, is it a nice place? Oh, sure. Why? Oh, this girl I know is going to move there. Oh? Is, uh, is she a nice girl, Chester? She was. <laughs> what do you mean, she was? 
Well, I haven't seen her since she was about ten, and that was over twenty years ago. Well, what are you writing to the girl for, Chester? Oh, I don't write to her. I write to her brother, Welby. He tells me about everything. Uh, yeah, well, I'd better get out before you explain it to me. He wants me to marry up with her, Mr. Dillon. Oh, he does, huh? Yes, sir, but once a year, regular, I write and tell him I won't do it. Uh, yeah. He's getting too dang old. That's what's the matter with her. Uh, well, Did don't you? forget to put the lamp off before you leave the office tonight, Chester. No, sir, I won't. Get out! You see anybody? You want the rifle? No. Crawl over and put the lamp out, Chester, but keep low. Yes, sir. All right, we'll wait here a minute. He'll get away. Now he had a rifle, Chester, and he was in the alley right across the street. That was mighty poor shooting. And that's all he wanted to do was scare me. Oh, then it was that gambler you told me about. Corder, huh? Yeah, maybe. But I can't prove it. Well, you sure ought to do something about it. I am. Going to get something to eat. What? Well, you go out and drop the word here and there about me getting shot at. But why? Just do it, Chester. Yes, sir. I'll be around later. Hello, Kitty. Are you, uh, busy? No. Sit down. Ah, uh, thank you. I heard about you getting shot at tonight. Well, I've been shot before, Kitty. Oh. And I suppose I shouldn't worry about oh, it. Now, Kitty, don't start that. It's just luck you weren't killed years ago, Matt. It stopped being luck, Kitty, when I learned how to handle a gun myself. Sure. And anyway, somebody has to enforce the law, don't they? Well, that's the way I look at it. I'm sorry, Matt. Good evening, Marshal. Hello, Corder. Ah, right pretty girl. How long you been wearing shoes, mister? Now, oh, look here. Say what you have to say, Corder. You sure do make it hard to be friends, Marshal. I only wanted to say that I heard that you got shot at tonight. So? Well, I'm sorry it happened, that's all. I don't envy a man has to be a marshal. It's mighty dangerous. Besides that, it usually don't pay very good. And what do you think I ought to do about it, Corder? Quit? No. Oh, <laughs> that ain't necessary, Marshal. Because if you were smart, you could stay right here and make good money and be real safe to boot. I didn't know for sure it was you, Corder. But now I know. What are you talking about? There's a stage leaving Dodge about sunup. You're going to be on it. Oh, no. I'm opening a new game across the street tomorrow. I'll take your gun, Corder. Oh, wait a minute, Marshal. You can't do that. I think I can. Oh, by <laughs> heaven, you... Corder went to bed early that night in jail. But I got him up next morning in plenty of time to make the stage. He climbed into it, meek as a bird, and then it left. And I soon forgot about him. Like so many others, I'd run out of Dodge. I figured he'd keep going and make his trouble somewhere else. But a couple of weeks later, I found out I'd figured wrong. I was walking up Front Street one afternoon with Doc. Uh, I tell you, man, I'm going to take down my shingle one of these days and... Let all these people find themselves a good vet. <laughs> Who's been sour in your milk, Doc? Oh, uh, Miss Humboldt. That's her. She's been coming in every day for a week. Ah, you're usually complaining about a shortage of patients, Doc. Yeah, well, that woman's not a patient. She's a suicide. Oh, now, Doc, that might be said of anybody who comes to you. Huh? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, well, the price for cutting bullets out of you just went up, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. 
Tell me about Miss Humboldt. Oh, she wants to be bled all the time, and I won't do it. Now, a lot of people think bleeding's good for them. Well, I do. And I just... Oh, 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 Doctor. Oh, hi, Justin. He's right inside the Alpha Gander here, Mr. Dillon. I just saw him. Who did you see, Chester? That gambler. Corder. What? And he's got somebody else with him, some stranger. Well, we'll, we'll see you later, Doctor. Oh, yeah, well, sure, Mr. Come on, Chester. Bar, Mr. Well, I'll be. There he is, Tom. That's him. Him? I'm back, Marshal. Brought a man with me to sort of look after my interests. You won't buffalo him so easy. Hello, Tok. You really the Marshal here? Didn't Quarter tell you? He didn't mention no name. Yeah, what are you talking about? Tok Morland and I are old friends, Quarter. We worked and rode a long time together. In fact, we went through quite a lot, didn't we, Tuck? Too much, Matt. Remember? Yeah, I remember. You're marshal now, huh? And you've sold your gun to quarter here. Is that right? That's right. So you're here to kill me? Yeah. I'm here to kill you. Turn for the second act of Gunsmoke in just a moment. But first, tomorrow night, Herbert Marshall stars as the Honorable Edmund Burke, British statesman and member of Parliament. Hear his story on CBS Radio tomorrow night on the Radio Hall of Fame with Lionel Barrymore as your host. Now the second act of Gunsmoke. It was a bad feeling to meet Toke Marlin again after some 15 years and to have him standing at the bar of the Alafraganza hired by a crooked gambler to kill me. Toke and I had run horses together over in Colorado until the night we rode into La Hunta and got taken by a drunken mob and beaten half to death. And the next day, when they found out we weren't the men they wanted, it was too late. By then, something had gone wrong inside Toke. And as soon as he could climb on a horse, he'd ridden off without a word. And I never saw him again. Until now. How long you been a marshal? Quite a while, Took. I never figured a lawman for much. A lot of people don't. Like Quarter here. Uh, go ahead, Took. Shoot him. I'll back you up. I handle my own gunfighting, Quarter. I want to talk to you, Took. Uh, Come on over to the table. No, you don't, Marshal. You stay Shut right up, here. Quarter. Come on, Tuck. Sit down. Well, Tuck, is this your profession now? Shooting people? I gamble a little. Why do you do it, Took? I don't like people much. Not after what happened at La Hunter. Oh, you got over that beating? We both did. Anyway, that was a long time ago. Maybe my memory is better than yours. No. No, it isn't. We both changed after that, Took. We sure did. But in different ways. Now, you hate everybody. I just hate mobs. I guess that's one reason I became a lawman. There was a lawman helping them that night, La Hunter. The sheriff himself. Well, there are good sheriffs and bad. Like Marshal? Like anybody, Took. It's kind of too bad you're a Marshal, Matt. You mean you're going through with this anyway? I never back off from a fight. Well, suppose I won't fight. I get paid all the same.
But you'll have to get out of Dodge. You think I'll do that? No. But I'll give you 24 hours to worry it around. All right, Tuck. That gives you 24 hours, too. I don't change. Talk's nothing to me. But money is. It adds to the pleasure. Tell me something, Tuck. Huh? You'd, uh, enjoy shooting me? You ain't Matt Dillon no more. You're a lawman. Same as the one who helped him half kill me. And you too, Lord. Yeah, you're a fool, Tuck. Maybe. But I'm a pretty good gunman. Sure. You can let Corder run his game here, or you can quit. It's a crooked game. There'd be fights. Men would die. 24 hours, Marshal Dillon. Okay. 24 hours. Your cut, Chester. You sure you don't want to stop, Mr. Dillon? Oh, just because I've been losing? It could be a bad omen, especially today. That's like I told Kitty, Chester. I don't depend on luck. Oh, You two still playing cards? Oh, Doc. Doc, how many, Chester? Uh, one. Mm-hmm. Match you've been hiding out in here all day long while everybody's talking about how you let that gambler come back to town yesterday after running him out. And I don't like it. I'm taking three, Chester. It'll all be settled tonight, Doc. Mm-hmm. Well, they're saying you're afraid of that gunman he's got with him, that, 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 that toke something. It's your bet, Chester. Uh, Doc, don't get drunk too early today, huh? We might need you. Oh, I quit. I can't even think of that, Mr. Dillon. <laughs> okay, Justin. If there's anything I hate, it's a paid gunman. A paid gunman? Oh, so that's what he is. Ain't there no way at all to stop him, Mr. Dillon? How are you going to stop a man that kills just for money? Just for money? Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> Doc, you, do you know where he is now? Well, he, uh, well, he was in the Texas Trail uh, a little while ago, Matt. He... Good. I'll be back later. Hello, Tuck. Mm-hmm. Well, Marshal Dillon. Sit down, Marshal. You know Miss Kitty here? Hello, Matt. Kitty. I've been talking about you, me, and Kitty. And talking about me, too. Good. That's what I want to talk about, Tuck. Me? I'll go right ahead. But don't stay too long. She's a real pretty girl, Matt. Maybe I'd better leave. If you leave, I leave with you. Matt? It's all right, Kitty. Stay. Tuck. How much is quarter paying you to get rid of me? Three hundred dollars. Yeah. Well, what if I give you three hundred? To shoot him. You don't care who you kill, do you? It don't matter much. No. All right. I'll give you three hundred to clear out of here and forget this whole business. Why? Well, we were good friends once, Took. Till you got mad and started hating everybody. You've changed too, Matt. You sure never were a coward in the old days. Is that what you think I am? Well, so does Kitty. Don't you, Kitty? Don't tell me what I think, mister. <laughs> He's full of vinegar, Matt. A girl like that deserves a real man. Yeah, I think I'll get my money from Corder so I can hang around Dodge and get a little better acquainted with her. Now I am leaving... Well, I guess there's nothing more to say, Tope. Nothing I know of. See you in about an hour, Marshal. Unless you go hide. Uh, 
I told him, Mr. Dillon. Thanks, Chester. He said he likes the idea of meeting you in the street. So do I. There's less chance of anybody else getting hurt out here. Yes, sir. Uh-oh. There he comes. Yeah. Mr. Dillon, I... I wish you... Get out of the street, Chester. Yes, sir. Then get out of Dodge, Toke, and take Corder with you. Corder don't mean nothing to me. Does anything? Just killing people, especially lawmen. Okay, Toke. Go ahead. Watch me. I'm hurt, man. Bad. Yeah. You hit me. Both times. I had to. Funny thing, man. What? I'm lying here. Flooding inside. Dying. But I ain't mad no more. I don't hate nobody. Talk. I... It's too late to do anything about it. Yeah. It's too late, Talk. Sure. Here it is. Chester. Yes, sir. Take care of him, will you? You going after Corder? Corder isn't the kind of man who'll stay around after this. No, I'm... I'm going for a ride. Alone. Gunsmoke, under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in the cast were John Daner, Lawrence Dobkin, and Vic Perrin. Harley Bear as Chester, Howard McNear as Doc, and Georgia Ellis as Kitty. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. Laughs Ahead on CBS Radio tomorrow night with Our Miss Brooks on most of these stations. George Walsh speaking. Stay tuned now for Gangbusters, which follows in a few minutes over most of these same stations. There's Comedy with My Little Margie Sunday nights on the CBS Radio Network.